Good morning, Colfax. Welcome back to the show for the 2022 spring semester. We've been hard at work all month long prepping an awesome season for you guys. So make sure to tune in every week during advisory as we bring you all the news from every corner of campus. This week, we welcome our newest club to campus. And we take a trip to the courts where the girls and boys basketball teams are making their run through the Pioneer Valley League. Welcome to the show. The semester has already gotten off to an awesome start in classes, sports, clubs, and so much more. That's right, Megan. The campus is alive with activity, including the Model UN Club taking part in a conference over the weekend, where Bryson Kaysler and Ryder Vernon earned honorable mention awards, while Jessica Clampett and Alex Hagan won a research award. The Quad Crown enters its second week, and for those of you who don't know, the Quad Crown is a series of tournaments including ping pong, Mario Kart, chess, and dodgeball. There are both individual tournament winners, plus the overall quad crown winner for the person who collects the most points over the course of all four events. Last week featured an exciting ping pong tournament in the quad with two divisions, student and staff. Austin Lydon became the second freshman champion in a row when he took down fellow freshman Garrett Lewis in the final. Mr. Wolf narrowly got by Mr. Palfano in the staff final. Here are the overall quad crown standings. Austin Lydon earned 5 points, Gavin Lewis 4 points, Nick Bazzaroni 3 points, Nathan Francella 2 points, and RJ Brown 1 point. Today is the second day of the Mario Kart tournament, and don't forget you can earn overall points for any tournament you play in, but you do not have to play in all of them. For those of you hoping to participate in the chess tournament, the signups are this week during lunch on the leadership steps, so make sure to stop by and sign up. Colfax always encourages students to create clubs that foster their individual likes and interests and allows them to share with others. The newest club on campus does just that by connecting students who love to read with some awesome books. The first Colfax Book Club has arrived on campus and looks to inspire fans of books and reading to do what they love in a fun and supportive way. Other people should be excited for the club because it's a great extracurricular, it's fun, you get to choose what you're reading, so it's not like if you're stuck with a book you really don't like. You can drop out for a book, you can join for the next book, whatever you want, and it's educational, so it's probably more beneficial than other clubs and it helps your academics. Annie Spring initially started this club as a way to express her love for reading and hopefully share it with others who feel that same connection. Currently, there are 8 to 10 people in the club and it's growing from there. Their first meeting was held last Thursday in Miss Mitchum's room where they discussed the first book, All the Light We Cannot See, a historical fiction that takes place during the Holocaust. Each book is chosen and voted on by club members. From there, sections are chosen to read and a discussion is held about those sections in Miss Mitchum's room during flex, without any academic pressure. My future hopes for the club would be for us to grow um, and have as many students who love reading and who want to be there as we possibly can. Um, and again, I would, I would love to have uh, some kind of fundraising so that would, would really open up our options in terms of the kinds of things we read um, and the kinds of books that we have access to. To see what the club is all about, sign up for Miss Mitchum Selects every other Thursday. All students are welcome to join. For CTV with camera op and editor Dominic Herrera, I'm Kylie Powell. A great opportunity to connect with people, read some good books, and for no other reason than the joy of it. I might just have to attend that advisory meeting. Me too. Well, Colfax, despite what the weather may feel like, we are in the midst of the winter sports season. Let's go to Bethany Gadway with this week's sports update. Thank you, Shaylin. Hello, Falcons, and welcome back to CTV Sports. The Nordic Ski Team has been busy competing in two separate races over the past weekend, including the Truckee Sprints on Friday. Senior Joseph Painter led the Falcon Sprinters in a one-kilometer sprint that qualified him, as well as Daniel Bittner, Megan Schwartz, Mallory Gorba, and Paige Nilsson for the 36th skier final. On Sunday, four of Colfax's top skiers competed in the open division of a grueling race that went from Tahoe City to North Star. Daniel Bittner led the four-person team of Griffin Vernon, Joseph Painter, and Megan Schwartz with the fastest time in all completed in the race. The team has three races left in the season and will be at Mammoth this weekend. The girls and boys basketball teams are in the second half of the league season and reporter Megan Town with Shaylin Ackerman have this update. 
What's up, Falcons? I am here at the Golden One Center in Sacramento, where both our boys and girls basketball teams are playing one of their very last preseason games before league play tips off. That was then, and this is now. Both teams took wins against Woodland at the Golden One Center, adding to their impressive preseasons. Our girls racked up 16 wins, including winning the Barry and Christian Tournament and beat Placer twice. The boys matched their best preseason since 2019, winning nine games. With league play underway, the boys and girls teams have very clear goals in the Pioneer Valley League. The girls have their sights set on repeating as PVL champions, while the boys look to make back-to-back -back playoff appearances. Both head coaches will be key to reaching these goals. So my aspirations for this team is just that they get comfortable in our system and don't have to think so much. Things just become natural um, and we're able to execute at um, the level that I would like. Well, we're hoping to field a team that uh, we can be proud of, that plays hard, that plays the game the correct way, that plays together. Uh, that's fundamentally sound and uh, we hope to have fun playing basketball. 2020 marked the last full season for the Lady Falcons where they went a perfect 10-0 in league and won 35 games on their way to the state semifinal. Juniors Gabby Bittner and Macy Hyman were on that team and know what it will take for another championship run. Um, I think we'll be counting a lot on our young, because we have our young players, we have two freshman starters on them and then I think also on Macy. Macy does a lot for us, she scores a lot. Experience is not a concern for head coach Rexanne Simpton. Um, I think we've got a lot of different weapons and there's always somebody new stepping up. You know, when they take away one, one person or they try and key on one person, somebody else steps up and um, that's important and been amazing this year so far. On Tuesday, January 25th, the girls faced off against league-leading Bear River, who boasted a 15-0 record. The Falcons suffered a loss to Marysville earlier, which made this a must-win situation. Colfax deployed their trademark full-court pressure to disrupt the Bruin attack and create scoring opportunities. Team scoring leader Macy Hyman scored eight points and keyed the interior defense, while team assist leader Gabby Bittner applied relentless pressure on Bear River and put her teammates in positions to score time and time again, resulting in a dominant 46-26 win and a share of first place in the PVL. On the boys' side of the ball, the team is focused on steady improvement as they overcome a limited summer schedule. We're still trying to find an identity, and we're still working on becoming a team. But if we become the team I think we can become, we'll be a good defensive team, we'll, we'll play well together, we'll run a motion offense, uh, play man-to-man -man defense, and uh, hopefully we'll be a team that's hard to beat. The boys will count on a strong senior leadership to reach their goals of becoming that hard-to-beat team. I think uh, we have two key players on the team this year. They're, they're our, our captains. Uh, one is Joe Siner, he's a senior. Joe's our leading scorer, our best uh, perimeter threat, best outside shooter. Uh, he's probably averaging well over 20 points a game. And then uh, Luke Green is our uh, other captain. He's also a senior. Luke's a very good athlete. He was the MVP of the league in football. Uh, he's an incredibly good defensive player, very quick, very strong. Uh, and leads the team in assist. He always guards the other team's best player. The top of the Pioneer Valley League on the boys' side is very talented, with center being the seventh-ranked team in Division Three and Marysville the second-ranked team in Division Four. The boys fell to both teams in the first round and ran into a very motivated Bear River team on Tuesday night, resulting in a loss. The team has circled a must-win game on Tuesday, February 10th, when they take on Lindhurst for senior night. To see how the basketball season plays out, come to the Pucha Pavilion tonight to see the girls play the Division II Vista del Lago of Folsom and Tuesday, February 10th to see the boys play Lindhurst. Reporting for CTV on behalf of writer Megan Town and camera ops and editor Garrett Reinhard, I'm Shaylin Ackerman. The girls avenged their only loss in the PVL on Friday with a dominant performance beating Marysville 51-27, putting themselves in a tie with Bear River for first place. The boys continue to battle every time they take the floor, but narrowly fell to the PVL's best boys team, 63-55.
The Alpine ski team took to the slopes last Monday at Alpine Meadows. Senior Noah Francella and junior Miracle Wooten both took eighth place finishes in their divisions. The team returned to Alpine Meadows yesterday where they are working to improve their league standing and start preparing for state qualifications. The varsity girls soccer team has been dominating and boasts a 13-2 record on the season. They scored a 7-0 win over soccer rival center last Wednesday and a 10-0 win over Marysville last Monday. In the same game, freshman Kaya Diedrichs broke the school's single season scoring record with her 25th goal of the season. The girls have three games remaining and tomorrow night is a senior night as the girls take on Lynnhurst at 6.15 p.m. On the boys' side of the goal, our Falcons took on Marysville in a heated match, resulting in a 2-2 draw last Monday. Junior attacker Matthew Schmidt hustled for both goals with the help of teammate Zach Green, who unfortunately suffered a season-ending leg injury. The team is hopeful for a fast and full recovery. The boys fell to second-ranked center in one of their toughest matches in the PBL last Wednesday. This week, they set their sights on winning games against Bear River and Lyndhurst to improve their position in the league and keep their playoff hopes alive. That's all I have for you today, Colfax. We'll see you next week for an inside look on our wrestling team. Until then, I'm Bethany Gadway for CTV Sports. It's great to see what all our sports teams are doing. Keep up the great work, Falcons. And speaking of great work, CTV would like to give a huge thanks to last semester's freshman president, Drew Stowers, and VP, Quincy Mora. They led some awesome events like the River Bowl, Letters for Veterans, and the Winterfest Pancake Breakfast. Thanks for all your hard work, guys. Congratulations are also in order for this semester's new freshman class presidents, Morgan Toner and her vice president, Savannah Hostler. We can't wait to see you continue to grow the class of 2025 with your talented leadership team. Well, Colfax, that's all we have for you today. Next week, we take a look at an awesome way students are showing off their talents. And hit the mats with the wrestling team. Until then, I'm Megan Town for Shaylin Ackerman. Have a great day, Colfax.